as well. Steven Spielberg's nail-biting thriller Jaws remains one of the most iconic films of all times. Uh, but behind the scenes, it was not so ideal. Played by feuding actors, <laughs> seasick crew, which I didn't know, I didn't know about this, <laughs> and the faulty mechanical yeah. shark. Now, 45 years later, West End plays lifting the lid on the unbelievable on set shenanigans that nearly sank the film before it even began. We're joined by Ian Shaw, one of the well, son of the legendary Jaws actor Robert Shaw, who wrote and stars in the show. Morning, Ian. Great to have you with us. Morning. Good morning. We've both seen it. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. It's funny. It's, there's a little bit of pathos in there as well. What was it like to... to when did you come to this decision, because you're an actor in your own right, mm. to write this and, 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 you know, jump in, excuse the pun, and actually play your own father? Well, I'd had a few sort of little ideas that had been percolating around. Um, I looked in the mirror one day. I had a moustache for a part. I thought I looked like Quint. Um, I'd always loved the movie, loved the Indianapolis speech particularly, thought it was quite theatrical. Yeah. Um, I had also been in a drama documentary about Hiroshima. So there was a strange connection. connection there. Um, but I didn't think it was a terribly good idea because I was, you know, I'd always tried to avoid association with my father. Well, a lot of children who, are, who have famous parents, they do, they don't want to be associated. Well, my son's the same, he don't want to be associated with me. <laughs> so at what point did you think, oh, I want, to, I want to do this? I had a beer with a friend and just mentioned the idea, um, David Mountfield, um, and then I spoke with Joseph Nixon, and, uh, who was the co-writer, uh, Duncan Henderson, who designed it, Guy Masterson, who directed it, and they all thought it was a great idea. So then I felt under a little bit of pressure to deliver. Yeah. Um, and I was very nervous because, you know, um, I didn't want to put my father on a pedestal. Um, and, you know, so I, I, was, I was very reluctant. But I was very glad that we, that we did, because once we started writing it, it was clear to me that there were a lot of interesting um, universal issues. That well, it's funny, because I saw it a couple of months ago, about a month, probably a month or six weeks ago, and then you saw it last night. Yeah. The first thing you said to me this morning was how funny it was. It was so funny. So It's Thank like you. laugh out loud, so, so good. <laughs> but also, I don't think I appreciated, back when I watched it as a child, how little we saw of the shark. Yeah. And I, so I never clever, connected with the fact that it was because it didn't work, and they hadn't thought about the fact that you know, the shark doesn't work in salt water. They hadn't considered that at all, had they? No, well, I mean, they tested it in fresh water, <laughs> but uh, salt water played havoc with... Because they originally wanted to capture a shark and tame it, didn't they? <laughs> and they realised... <laughs> it's a bad it's, idea. That's a very bad... Well, impossible, and <laughs> a really bad idea. <laughs> um, you, you visited the set when you were a child, didn't you? I did, yes. What are your memories of that? My memories of it were of meeting Bruce, which was the name that they gave to the shark, which was uh, named after Steven Spielberg's lawyer. <laughs> Um, and I was scared. You know, people these days think that... Oh, there the... you are. Oh, yes. Oh, goodness. Uh, yes, I remember the front end uh, <laughs> being scary, um, and, you know, and was obviously terrified by the movie when I saw it a little bit later, but I did see it quite young. Yeah. Do you think you, you know. connected that your dad was just acting and that was pretend and it wasn't real? I did, because I remember having nightmares about sharks swimming around my... Bed, you know, yeah. and calling out for my dad to save me, which well, that's, he did. That's, that's Switched the light on. Yeah. You know. yeah. And you, it's funny because in the play, uh, he's kind of, um, I guess, kind of irritated slightly by Richard Dreyfuss's character because your dad was a, a very good writer and a Shakespearean actor, and and uh, and I, I guess Richard Dreyfuss was at the time quite an upstart actor and and so forth. And uh, I guess that they both had their own kind of demons to a degree. But you always remember him as a, a very kind and, and benevolent father as well. Yeah, he was a very, very loving and funny dad to us. Um, you know, unlike the sort of, you know, macho personalities that he tended to, to play. Mm. Although he did the, have that side, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. What's, um, when you sat down to write the play, um, wh where do you get the, the material from in terms of the on onset tension that uh, that ultimately they're in it together and you know and, and I think there's you, you, the way you write there's a great fondness between the characters really towards the end yeah but you know there are tensions on set and um, so where did you get the material for that was that just anecdotal or? there's a wealth of material so um, from my own family um, Virginia Shaw was there um, from Carl Gottlieb's book um, the Jaws log which is terrific read yeah. anyway um, 
from Steven Spielberg, Richard Dreyfuss and Roy Scheider talking about it in, in various documentaries from uh, interviews, yeah, press clippings, there's, there's a lot of material. Yeah. And you met, you get, there's, there's, we've got some footage of the play now. You, uh, you met Dreyfuss a few years ago, didn't you? I did. I auditioned for him in the 90s. He was directing Hamlet and... How did it go? Well, I'd, I didn't realise that they hadn't got on at that point. <laughs> um, and I introduced myself, I was sort of expecting a hug. I'm a huge, <laughs> huge admirer yeah. of Richard Dreyfus, by the way, I should add. Um, anyway, he looked a little bit shell-shocked Well, I guess you're seeing, you know, in many ways, you're seeing you and his, you know, you look like your father. Yes, but it looked like it had brought back some <laughs> trauma. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I hope one day to, to, to meet him again and, uh, you know, to give him the hug yeah. this time. Listen, what we're seeing now is the classic... Oh, wow. That was that famous monologue. Yeah, the USS Indianapolis speech, which is kind of the, um, what the play's not necessarily based around, but it's, I guess it's the kind of... It's the spine of the play, really, isn't it? It's, it's getting this speech right. Tell us about how... I mean, this is such a famous speech in cinema history, but a uh, monologue of cinema history. Tell us about um, where this sits in the play and how important it was and, and the, the, the story behind it. Well, as you say, it, it is the, the spine of it because um, it was originally an extremely long speech written by Howard Sackler, which was then cut down to three pages by John Melius, but it was still unworkable um, and so Robert wrote it the you know the final draft of it as it is shown in the film mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a wonderful piece of cinema because it shouldn't work it, it's still quite long um, and, in, and in movies they say you should show not tell yeah um, but I think it's what a lot of people regard as um, you know a spellbinding moment in in films and he liked to drink so he, he was trying to Get it right, but he was a little bit. One well, that's the, the other thing. He, the first time he did it, he got too drunk to complete it. <laughs> Why did he want to do that? Was he just trying to make it more realistic? The moment. I don't know. <laughs> I genuinely don't know. I know he liked to have a drink, and that's one of the <laughs> yeah, themes of the play. Um, but uh, he rang Stephen at two o'clock in the morning, you know, um, to apologise and to beg to do it again, and he delivered the next day. Yeah, so. and it's such a yeah. good speech. Oh, it's wonderful. So I'm interested to know, are you getting on with the cast at the moment? <laughs> Do you like them? Very well. <laughs> They're lovely. No arguments. Dimitri Goritsis and Liam Murray-Scott are absolutely lovely. So, yes. And the play's on now. It's running through to fe February. The extended, Shark is bro yeah. broken. It's showing at the Ambassadors Theatre in London. It yeah. was absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. Tickets are available now. It's so lovely. Yeah, Can I also just Go say on. that you don't need to be a Jaws fan no. to see the play. That's one thing we're, we're keen to get across, yeah. that it is a play about actors uh, stuck together. Yeah. Thanks, Brilliant. Ian. No Thank worries. Thank you, Ian. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you very Thank much you. for having me. Thank you.